Hello and welcome to Coralsome Rhinoceros Stitches episode number 31. Uh, my name is Monica, I'm the host. This is a knitting podcast and sometimes other crafts as well, um, as well as a little bit of um, what's going on in my life. So, actually, why don't I just scooch you a little closer? <laughs> Um, so it has been about three weeks since I podcasted last and I usually podcast every two weeks and so at the end of the second week I was like well I don't really have a whole lot to share so I will just wait an extra week and um, I had some things going on so which I'll talk about at the end of the podcast so I was like I'll just wait and I'll podcast later and um, in that time in the one week extra it has exploded into I have a lot of content to share with you today. Um, so I am coming to you from Maine, um, which is in the northeastern corner of the United States. I am um, right in the middle of tourist season right now, so there's lots and lots and lots of people um, in my little state, and um, I don't like to drive anywhere right now. Um, now that I'm saying people from out of state can't drive, there are just a lot more people on the road. Usually traffic is like 10 other cars on the road with you, but this time of year it is, there are a lot of people. Um, so uh, let's get right into it. I have one finished object to share with you today. Um, and I shared it as a work in progress last time. I have not blocked it because I haven't really blocked any of the last like five or six projects I've worked on. Um, <laughs> so I will block it eventually and uh, and then probably wear it this fall. So this is my cowl. It's two color brioche. Um, I cast on 200 stitches and did one round of just knit stitch and then a round of brioche set up and then I did two color brioche and I just kept knitting until I was out of yarn. Um, so this is going to be really good for the early fall. Um, I can double it up. Um, I can wear it underneath uh, like a light jacket. Um, I think it is not, I mean, obviously it's not going to be enough for winter. Here winters are um, pretty cold. So I don't think I'll be able to wear this during the winter, even under my really big coat. I'll probably still need something more substantial, but I really enjoy how this turned out. Um, it is using two different yarns. The first is uh, the gray one on the main color on this side is uh, Dingo Dye Works um, in the pinky colorway. It's just a nice tonal gray. Or, well, it's more of a solid. I don't know. Anyway, uh, and then this side is Hedgehog Fibers, um, and it's a mini that somebody sent me as a gift last Christmas, and I think the colorway is Lagoon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I had it up on my podcast last time. I have it in my podcast notes. I just don't have it in my, in my very high-tech notes that I have this week. So... There is that. It is completely finished. Um, I think it's going to be a nice fall piece. Um, I still haven't woven in any of the ends. Um, but yeah, so I did also make it on a fairly big needle. I think I used a US 6, which I think is a 4 millimeter needle, um, and it's fingering weight yarn. So um, I don't think I'm going to write up a pattern for it just because it it is literally just two color brioche in a circle. Um, <laughs> but that is, uh, yeah, all finished. Hooray. I'm so glad it's done. Um, because that meant that I could use that size six needle for a different project. Uh, <laughs> but also it means that I can cast on another project without feeling bad about it. So I finished that cowl. Um, and I am now, uh, that is the only finished object that I have for the whole week. I have been putting a lot of work into other projects and I have a new cast on, so um, it'll be uh, hopefully I'll have some more finished objects here pretty soon. So my next work in progress 
I'm holding in my Hannah Lisa Haferkamp bag. I've got my cute little pin badges on it. I've got a little black bear. I've got a little David Bowie. Two of the things that I like most in the world. Um, so I am knitting a pair of socks and um, I have shown the sock as a work in progress. Um, here is the yarn I'm using. It is the um, Aracunea Yarns Huasco sock, I believe is, uh, I think, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's what it is. Um, and it's in the color Guacamayo. So it's these, like, bits of undyed with just speckles on it. It's got bright pink, blue, and yellow, um, vibrant sort of primary colors. Um, it reminds me of, like, confetti as it's being knit up. Um, so here is my sock so far. So here is the leg of the sock. I did, uh, I think the last time I shared it with you, I was possibly where this little unicorn is. This is my little corner of craft unicorn, um, stitch marker. Um, I'm very sorry about the lighting. It has changed because the sun has gone back behind a cloud. Anyway, um, so this... I have finished the heel turn, and I am less than an inch away from the toe decreases. Um, I kept trying it on, and like wishing I was done and then like really fitting it on my foot and realizing that I still have an inch to go. So, um, so yeah, so this is, I think this is the first pair of socks that I'm knitting for myself this year, which it's August and I'm only knitting a pair of socks for myself now. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the only one I've knit this year. <clears throat> I've done a lot of gift knitting this year, and um, I think it's probably, I, it will probably mean that I won't do very much for Christmas. Um, I, usually, if I am going to knit, um, if I'm going to knit gifts during the year, I won't knit them at Christmas because it's just too stressful. But, um, we'll see, I guess. I'm sure that my grandmother will ask me to knit her something, but anyway, so, um, this heel, I want to talk about that really quickly. So this heel is the New Depths heel. It is a pattern by Becky Sorensen of Soprano Knits, and she has created a heel pattern that actually fits my really high end step. So, um, I've been hurt. I've been hearing a bunch of people talking about this, this heel pattern and how it actually fits. I'm so sorry about the traffic noise. There's really nothing I can do about it. I live on a really busy street. Um, but yeah, so this heel pattern is amazing. It fits, it's awesome, um, really easy directions to follow, and there are a couple of uh, video tutorials that she's posted on YouTube to help if you have any issues with the tutorial or if you need to know how she's doing something. Um, it is really, really good. I really like it. Um, it is not, um, it is short rows, but it is not like German short rows or, or any other short row that I've I've seen, um, and yeah, I really, really enjoy it. Um, I think I did exactly as the pattern suggests for the, uh, like, gusset thing that she has you do. Um, I think I just followed the patterns completely, rather pattern completely, just to see if that would work for my heel, and I think that it actually does. So. The New Depths heel pattern, very, very good. I definitely recommend it. I'm very glad that I bought it. Um, and it's also only like, it's like $1.50 or something like that. Or I think it's like um, 150 Great British pounds or euros or something. Probably euros. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> 
it's cheap and it's great. Um, so, and then I'm just knitting stockinette, plain stockinette down to the toe. I'm probably just going to do my normal rounded toe decrease um, and then call it good. So I have almost a hoe, I guess. <laughs> it probably won't take me very long to finish this sock, um, but I have been working on a lot of other projects, so that's why they are not quite finished yet. Um, or why it is not quite finished yet. Uh, I am really excited to get to work on the second sock because I really do want a new pair of socks for myself. So, there's that. Shove that back in its bag. Um, so next I will talk to you about my wingspan shawl. So I showed this last time and I haven't put too much work on this, but I have added a third color, so, so I thought I'd share it anyway. Um, I've also managed to finish a row. I spent about 20 minutes before the podcast trying to make sure that none of my projects were in the middle of a row because last week or last time I podcasted, I had something that was in the middle of the row and it made me very, um, angry. So, <laughs> all right. So the wingspan shawl is a pattern by May Lin of Tricoterie Designs or Tricoterie Yarns and um, it is a a triangle, a modular triangle um, shawl where you basically you knit, use short rows to knit one triangle and then you continue on and knit another triangle, continue on um, and uh, when you are done, you have just a bunch of triangles. Um, so this is my my wingspan. Um, as you can see, I am on triangle number five right here. Um, so the first one I did was a uh, just plain stockinette. Um, the second one I did is a garter stitch. The third one is reverse stockinette with stripes. Um, obviously on this side it is regular stripe, stockinette stripes, but I really like the sort of confetti look that you get with reverse stockinette stripes. Um, the next one is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it very well on camera, but it is a slip stitch section um, with just the black yarn Ooh, trying to knit my hair into my, into my shawl. Um, and then this one is a uh, is stockinette stripes and I'm using this green yarn left over from my old romance and then I think I'm going to also stripe in some of the black as well so it's going to stripe with black and green rather than black and red. Anyway, um, so I am very close to being finished. There are seven triangles in the main pattern so I think I'm going to just do the seven. I might spring and do an extra an eighth just to have an even number. Um, because I really like even numbers, but, um, but yeah, so, um, this is, uh, Twin Mommy Creations, and this is a colorway that I picked up in Florida, and I'm trying to use the rest of it, um, in this shawl, and then, and then maybe have a little extra to put in my blanket, possibly, um, and then I'm hopefully gonna still have a little bit of this left over to put in my shawl, I thought, or in my blanket, I thought that uh, I would I had more of it than I actually do, um, but I don't think it's going to take too much yarn to finish the stripes on this section. Um, and then obviously I'm using black. Oh, this one is Dingo Dye Works, and I don't remember the name of the color, but I used it in my old romance sweater. <clears throat> and then this is just Knit, Knit Pick Stroll in black. And yeah, so there is that. I'm really excited about um, for this shawl. I hope that I can come up with some other stitch patterns <laughs> um, to use for the last few sections. I may do another garter stitch section. I don't know. Anyway, I might just do a plain reverse stockinette section. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so I'm really enjoying that one. Um, this one is, use, is living in my Silver Shed USA bag. It's got all kinds of cool knitting 
Uh, this fabric is all kinds of cool sayings for knitting. Um, and it's a nice, like, quilted, like, pa padded bag. Um, I don't know. And I really like this, like, strap that's on the side of it. Because it also comes off. Anyway. Um, so there is that. Now. Whew. That is my my next work in progress. My, the next thing I'm going to talk about is my blanket. Now, I've made mention of my blanket several times in the episode, and I figure I should probably show it to you because it has grown substantially since I last showed it on the podcast. Um, I have been working on this thing so much in the last three weeks. Um, there have been days where I don't want to concentrate on something too hard. Like, knitting doesn't take too much concentration from me, especially if I'm just doing, um, stockinette. Um, but it has... Crochet has always been easier for me, um, in, in terms of how hard it is. So, I've had a couple of days this, this couple of weeks, last couple of weeks, that I just needed to turn my brain completely off and do some crocheting. So, um, you'll see why, or you'll see how much progress I've made in just a second when I actually get this opened up. All right, so, there we go. All right, so this thing is very large. Um, it is a granny, it's, why don't I start off with the pattern? So it is the granny stripe blanket or Afghan pattern um, by Attic24, I believe, is the, the person who made the original blog post. It has been all over the knitting and crocheting community. Um, and I am making one. I am making one out of all of my scraps that I have wound together into a very large gobstopper ball and um, I'm making it big enough to fit on my full-size bed so um, it is very wide and why don't I just show it now okay so here is I can only show it in pieces so here is the whole thing there you go so it is quite large now the last time I shared it with you, it is was probably around Christmas because I was using Christmas stitch markers. Um, it was right here, and I have done all of this since I last showed it on the podcast. So, um, all of these things, all of these rows, I have done since then, um, and they're very long rows. <laughs> Um, and I think I've done most of those in the last three weeks. Um, so, I wanted to share with you... Oh, that's right. I've already put those in. Okay. So, um, these yarns here, up until right here, are all from uh, Suzanne of Green Lambkin Yarns. She sent me some really awesome mini skeins um, to put into my blanket. And from here to here... That is where, that is how much yarn she sent me. Um, I'm going to guess that it's, pro it was probably close to at least 50 grams, if not more, of yarn um, in, there I am, pulling out some stitches. Now that I've shown you where I was last, I will take this stitch marker out and use it to stop myself from pulling out these stitches. Okay. Anyway, so um, that is all of those yarns are from Green Lambkin Yarns. And then I've got some, these are the yarns that I used in my cowl right here. I've got some ones that I used, uh, yarn that I used in a pair of socks last year. I've got um, some of that green yarn that I was just talking about that I'm putting in my wingspan. I've got some Lolo Did It. I've got some Madeline Tosh that's actually a DK weight um, 
yarn. And then I just finished putting in my mini skein from Florida when I went. And I think I'm just about to start another mini skein that I was given for a Christmas present. So, so yeah, I'm really enjoying this crochet pa project pattern. Um, if you just search for granny stripe blanket, you are going to find the Attic 24 version. I am doing her exact pattern. I'm not, well, not with the same, not with the same starting stitches, but it's the same on either end where she, where you turn it. Um, and yeah, it is, I'm really, really enjoying it. It is kind of, it's big enough now that I can set it on my lap while I'm working on it. And, um, and that's good, or it will be good when it's a lot cooler outside. So there is that. I'm so happy with this. It is making me so happy to work on this, this project. So <clears throat> hopefully I will make some more progress. I still have quite a bit of yarn left to put in it. Um, this is all, this is a gobstopper ball that I have wound. I've got like four or five, hmm, I don't know. I think after this mini skein is done, I've got the yarns left over from my Oracle shawl and then some other, other scraps and minis going into it. <clears throat> and I really like it. Um, the, I think the only difference that I have in the, the pattern is that I'm actually using a very small hook. This I'm trying to make this a very dense um, blanket because it does get very cold in Maine. Um, so I'm using a lot of yarn to finish it. I mean, that and crochet does take more yarn than knitting does. But um, I'm using a D hook, which is a 3.125 millimeter hook. So um, only a little bit bigger than I would use for a sock, basically, or make use with the um, the yarn, the sock yarn for a sock. So um, it is a very dense blanket. Um, so hopefully it'll be really, really warm. Obviously all of my scraps are wool because that's the only yarn that I pretty much knit with or crochet with, I guess, in this case. So, um, so yeah. I am holding this in a very large bag at this point. It is the yarn that, or the bag that actually goes with the, the cup that I, <laughs> that I have my tea in today. Um, it says yarn is a part of a high fiber diet. I also really need to wash this bag because it's got all kinds of Kelsier hair all over it. That's right, Kelsier is my dog, by the way. Usually I try to introduce him, but he's over there having a nap, so. Um, so those are all of the, the um, works in progress that you have seen before. Now I cast a new thing on because I told you I cast off the cowl so I have to cast something new on. Now um, those of you who have been watching the podcast for a while uh, know that I got some Cascade yarns last Christmas um, in the color number 8894. Um, this is the Christmas green colorway. <clears throat> Here is the yarn itself. Um, it is a little bit more vibrant than it is showing up on the camera. It's more of a Kelly green, like it's a very, very bright green. And I absolutely love it. I love all greens with my hair. So um, I decided that I wanted to, it, it took me forever to decide what pattern to knit with this yarn. Um, I know, I, I knew I wanted something textured. I knew I wanted something probably cabled. Um, I knew I wanted a cardigan rather than a um, pullover because I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have noticed looking at all of my like I want to knit or all of my uh, things I have knit in the past, all of them are pullovers and I would like to have a cardigan that can actually close over my front and like button. So anyway, um, so I swatched. So there's my swatch. Hooray! Um, <laughs> it is just a swatch. It's really not that interesting, but um, I really enjoy swatching actually. It, it does not take me very long to knit just a small square. Um, and yeah, anyway, I haven't blocked this swatch, but I sort of stretched it out, hand blocked it a little bit, um, and I got some pretty good gauge that I was happy with, I'm a fabric that I was happy with, so I tried to find a pattern that was very um, similar in gauge to this. 
Um, <clears throat> and I did, except that the pattern was not big enough around for um, my bust size, um, especially not if I was going to be wearing something underneath it. So with cardigans, I really like to have some positive ease in the garment because I especially if I'm going to wear them in the winter, I will probably be wearing a long sleeve shirt underneath it. I'll may, maybe even will be wearing several layers underneath it and throw the cardigan on over, over top of it. So the cardigan pattern that I found that I loved has two, um, it is by Tannis Fiber Arts. Um, I cannot remember. I'm so sorry. What am, I should probably look this up. Um, I probably should have looked this up before I started. Um, so it's got two cables running down either side of the button band and then one going down the very middle of the back. Um, so that is good. Um, so it has like interest on both the front and the back. So this yarn is so, so plain and solid that I wanted something interesting because if I was just to knit a stockinette sweater in this, I would be very bored. Um, so it is a pattern called, I called I Heart Cardigans, um, and by Tannis Lavely of Tannis Fiber Arts. Um, and now the sizing for the sweater only goes up to a 48 inch bust, um, and my bust is actually a 49 and a half inches. So, um, I decided to modify the pattern rather than finding a different pattern. So I took my gauge and I modified the pattern so that I'm adding actually four extra inches. So I'm hopefully going to end up with a 52 inch, um, a 52 inch bust measurement on the garment. I'm still going to do the same, the same measurements for the sleeves that is in the biggest size for the, for the pattern because my arms are really short. And actually, I probably will just, to be honest, I will probably just um, improvise the sleeves like I did on my weekender thing because my my arms are very short um, and um, I'll probably need extra width around the arm hole area because I do have quite large upper arms. so. So hopefully I'll be able to make all of those uh, adjustments as I come to them in the pattern. I have, I had to add about 18 in 18 stitches, I think to the cast on. Um, and then I had to readjust sort of where I'm going to stop for the, um, for the underarm split because it is done bottom up. Um, but yes, so it is anyway, why don't I just show you the, um, cardigan. So this is what I have so far. Um, I can only show it to you in pieces because I can't stretch it out on these needles. So this is the right front of the pattern. Ooh, you can see where I messed up the cable there. Let's just pretend I didn't do that. Um, so there is the right front. We'll move on to the, there is the cable that runs up the back. And then this one over here is the left front. So basically the back consists of uh, its own cable pattern for the center and then the mirror images of the back of the, the um, or of either side of the front of the cardigan. Now this pattern was adapted from the I Heart Aaron pattern that Tannis Lavely does. Um, it is, that one is a pullover version, so if you want to do a pullover version instead of a cardigan version, you can do that. But so yeah, so there is um, there's my cardigan. Um, I'm very excited about this. Um, I do have about 30, 40, 50, about 50 or 60 more rows before I'm finished with this section. Um, so it's going to take quite some time, but it does seem to be knitting up pretty quickly and I am starting to get the hang of the cable pattern. So that is going a little bit quicker now. Um, but yeah, so I'm really excited about that. I have made quite a few modifications to the pattern already and I'm probably going to continue, have to continue to modify it to make it work for me. Um, 
So I don't recommend this pattern if you haven't, um, if you have a larger bust size and have not um, modified a pattern before, um, I feel like it probably is um, more of an advanced kind of knitting um, than than is than a beginner one, basically. So if you have um, modified patterns before then and have a bigger bust size than a 48 inch, go for it. Um, I think it's a great pattern and I'm really enjoying knitting it and I still have so much left to knit. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to be able to wear this in the winter. Um, I really want to be able to wear it over um, all of my like all of my 60 layers in the winter and still and have an that extra layer of warm um this i think i'll probably if i can get it done before winter um my this and my weekender shawl are going to be what i live in basically all winter um so yeah so that one is um i already mentioned it's in cascade 220 it's in a color called christmas green um and yeah, so those are all of my sort of works in progress. I do have a couple of other things to share. Um, so I've got, um, around Mother's Day, I remember I shared on the podcast that I was doing a cross stitch pattern for my mom for Mother's Day, and I was hopefully going to finish it in time, and I did not. <laughs> um, so my, my mom and I have this running joke that is, Mother's Day is actually in September because the first Mother's Day I spent away from her, I actually, um, I actually, uh, didn't send her her Mother's Day gift until September. So we just say that real Mother's Day is in September and, um, that, that everybody else celebrates fake, fake Mother's Day. Um, so this is continuing in that tradition and um, hopefully I'll be able to finish it by September. <laughs> um, but it is this wonderful cross stitch pattern. It says, I swear by my pretty floral bonnet. And then underneath it, it will say, I will end you, which is a quote from Firefly, which is my mom's very favorite show. Um, and then I'm gonna do some um, flowers around the outside and then I'm gonna frame it, I think. Um, and yeah, so I worked on this a little bit. I have done these two words since I showed it to you before. I'm still not done with bonnet, but hopefully I'll work on that while this is editing and uploading, or while I am editing it and uploading it. Anyway, um, but yeah, so this is done on 28 count Aida cloth. Um, so I'm only using one thickness of embroidery floss for it. Um, this is my preferred I really like the fabric that this produces or like how small the letters are. Um, yeah, anyway, this is um, something that I sort of work on when I'm like watching things uh, that I've already seen um, on Netflix or whatever. Um, sometimes I can like, so for knitting, I don't have to look at it. Crocheting, sometimes I don't have to look at it, but for needle, for um, cross stitch, I, I'm holding it this close to my face and like staring at it. And anyway, um, so I have to, it has to be something I've already seen on Netflix before I can actually um, do the cross stitch, which is one of the, one of the reasons why I haven't worked on it very much. Um, and that is the end of the things that I've been working on. Um, I, this brings me straight into my acquisitions um, and a future knit. So um, the only thing that I purchased this in the last three weeks is one skein of yarn um, from Knit Picks. It is the Hawthorne Fingering in the Fawn Kettle Dye. Um, so this is a very nice brown, a very tonal brown. Um, so there is that. That is the yarn that I purchased. Now this is to go into a Zweig sweater. Um, which this yarn, this green yarn, it is another Knit Picks. It is the Stroll Tonal on the evergreen colorway. So the, the body of the sweater is going to be this green. The color work section or the lace section is going to be this brown. Now, I didn't know for the size that I want to knit. I have enough of the body color for sure. Um, when I ordered this, I forgot to look at the yardage needed for the color work section for the size I was knitting, and this is not enough. Um, it is 
357 yards and I need 450 yards. So instead of just buying another one of these, because I have a lot of scraps that would look really good with either of these colors, um, I'm going to do the two color work sections at the top and the bottom of the yoke. Um, I'm going to do them in the leftovers of my, um, from one of my hats. So this is the it is Dragon Horde yarn in the muted Molly Weasley colorway, and I think it goes really well. It's got brown and green speckles. I think it goes really well with these two yarns. So I'm going to try to make this work for the color work sections and this work for the lace sections, and hopefully I'll have something resembling a sweater. <laughs> hopefully it's enough to add to this in order to do if not, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but, um, but yeah, I didn't want to just purchase another skein of yarn because I, first of all, they're out of stock of it right now. It will be a different dye lot when I get a new one. And, um, I don't have a lot of disposable income to actually spend on yarn. So hopefully this will work. Um, I think I'm going to make it work whether it does or not. So so yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to this. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks I can buy the Zweig sweater pattern and um, get started on the Zweig sweater. So those are all of the things that I wanted to talk about. That is everything yarny that I had, um, but I do have some other things that I did want to chat quickly about. Um, if you don't mind. Um, if you want to head out now, that's totally fine. Um, if you want to hear about my life in the last couple of weeks um, and uh, potentially sharing too much um, subject, then um, please stick around. Um, and yeah, I really hope that uh, you, you have enjoyed everything I've shared with you. Um, I really have such a great time producing the podcast, even though, um, even though sometimes the amount of content explodes <laughs> when I wait an extra week. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much for watching. If you, um, are headed out now, um, have a wonderful afternoon, enjoy your knitting. And, um, if you're sticking around, thank you so much for, for hanging out with me a little bit extra. Um, but yeah, so, um, I've been working a lot um, since I got back from vacation. Um, I've been working so much that it has been sort of a detriment on my mental health. Um, and I'm, I mean, I'm not working more than the 40 hours a week that I, that, you know, that I normally work. It's just, I'm trying to get caught up on all of the bills and everything that I had while I was away. Um, <clears throat> and it is, it is hard. Um, it is, been really really taking its toll on me um, mentally and and physically um, so um, it, and sometimes it doesn't feel like it's worth the stress um, the 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 job that I do doesn't feel like is making me enough money to get by um, to, to make ends meet I guess and and whatever um, so it's hard it's hard to make it feel feel worth all of the the stress that I'm feeling um, and it sort of culminated last week into um, my first panic attack in in years so um, so I uh, suffer from anxiety that's I have a brain that just won't shut off um, I overthink things and I replay conversations in my head from six years ago that I had that could have gone a different way. Um, that is the kind of brain that I have. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons why I started knitting, um, other than to stop myself from biting my fingernails, because that is also a manifestation of the anxiety, um, is to sort of quiet my brain down a little bit. Um, it got to a point last week where I just couldn't even knit. I was so stressed about having to pay my bills and all of this. Like, it's already the end of July. Where is, where is everything going? Like, where is my life going? And it started with, I have to pay my bills and, and expounded to what is my life and what am I doing with it? Um, and it was, it was horrible. Um, and, um, 
most of the coping me methods that I've that I've come up with over the years because I don't I don't take anxiety medication. Um, I should go to a doctor and get diagnosed and actually have medication for when these things happen, but I don't have health insurance. So it is one of those things where I need to go to a doctor, but I can't afford to go to a doctor because I'm already anxious about paying bills. So it's not, I'm not going to go out of my way to spend more money in order to feel better when I have other things that need to be taken care of. Um, so, so most of the coping methods I've come up with over the years have been knitting or um, escaping into video games or books or movies or anything I can do to take my mind off of things, everything. Um, <laughs> and none of those methods were working for me last week and I ended up having a panic attack in the middle of the night and the next morning I woke up and I felt like there was somebody sitting on my chest and I still had to go to work and it was just, it's its a never ending cycle. And, um, and sometimes it feels like it is too much to handle and now, and I do feel better now. I, as soon as I was done having the, the panting, can't breathe, weight on my chest kind of panic attack. Um, as soon as I was done, I started coming up with solutions for it and figuring out what I need to do in order to not only feel better, but, but be in a better place financially and be in a better place mentally so that I can, so that I can function like an adult. Um, <laughs> and, and so it's been, it's, it's been a week of trying to figure out a week, maybe a week and a half of trying to figure out where to go from here um and and i think that my brain sometimes just needs to have that panic moment before i can have the the revelation that maybe i will i'll fix something and and be able to move on um so sometimes i do need need the the panic situation in order to do something but um but yeah, so that's where my brain has been mentally. That's why it's taken me an extra week to podcast. Um, I generally don't share this much about my mental health or or anything, but I think that it is necessary um, to share in order for me to get better and also maybe to help someone else. Um, I've realized in the last couple of weeks, I actually mentioned just offhand, like like how anxious I was feeling to one of my coworkers. And we had this really great conversation about anxiety and like she suffers from it too. And I didn't even realize it. Um, it's one of those things obviously where most mental health, where it's, it's internal. So you don't see the manifestations of it unless you're watching someone have a panic attack. Um, so somebody can seem fairly normal. I mean, from the outside and they have all of this going on underneath. Um, and so we had a really good conversation about it, and so I felt inspired to share it on here about everything going on in my brain. So, um, but yeah, um, so that is what has been happening with me lately. And I wish that I could share that everything is great and that I'm just working and it's summer and everything is great, but to be, and honestly, it was hard for me to, um, to actually share something that is not quite positive um, with you. Um, but I think that it's very important that I am honest with, with you guys and with myself that I haven't been okay lately and um, that I am working on being better. Um, so there's that. Um, on a more positive note, um, for the last few months, I've been working with a couple of people or a group of people um, who podcast on Twitch and um, they are some really awesome people. So it is uh, called the Geek IO Media Network. We are, they're just a bunch of nerds, geeks that get together and talk about things. There are several shows during the week. There's one about anime. There's one that's sort of general geekery that they do every Thursday night. Um, and there is, um, sometimes they'll have guests on, sometimes they'll play fun games. Um, and they always talk about like what they've been, what they've been playing. Um, and there's, it's just a really great network. Anyway, so I've been I've been a moderator for them for a couple of months now, and they had a call out for 
someone to volunteer for a um, position doing their social media. Um, which is something that I've, I want to do um, for a career. Um, I would like to work for a company doing social media. Um, so that is something that really interested me. So I um, reached out and I was like, hey, here's, here's what I've done in the past. Here's other things I've volunteered for. Um, I'd really like to help out. And, um, and so now I am starting to be the sort of social media boss lady is my my unofficial title um <laughs> but uh but yeah so if you guys want to check it out it is um geek-io.net um you can also go to geek-io.net slash live if you want to see our live shows we also have there's it's um it, it's geek.io on all of the social medias that you can think of we're on facebook we're on twitter um those are the two that i am updating now um <laughs> So uh, if you want to come hang out with us and be geeky, um, then you can do that. Yeah, so Thursdays, it is 10 p.m. Eastern is when they, they live record um, one of the podcasts. That's their like main, main show. Um, Monday nights generally is the anime show, or sometimes it's a small screen spoiler show, which is pretty cool too. Um, but yeah, anyway, so if you... Um, want to come check us out that'd be pretty cool and yeah that's about it that's that's what I've been doing really honestly I've been having panic attacks and then deciding to to manage somebody's social media for them um so that's uh that's been my last three weeks and it's it's been kind of crazy <laughs> um but I think I'm pretty sure that was everything I'm pretty sure that that was everything I had to share today, and um, I really hope that uh, if if you also have anxiety problems, that I that I may have opened opened the door. If you want to come talk to me, I am always available. You can find me on social media um, as Quarrelsome Rhino, pretty much everywhere. Send me a PM, and we can chat about our crazy brains. Anyway, um, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and um, thanks so much for watching. Bye!